we have a lot of weather challenges uh, in Tanzania. And one of the big issues in Tanzania is lack of water. I visited my family last week, and I realized there is a real huge uh, issue of water scarcity. They move a very long distance, no water for the users at home, and it's real, real hard also for the farmers in agricultural activities. So these weather patterns have real, real changed. And of course, there is less rainfall within our areas. What about Dar es Salaam, where we are here now? Again, there is like availability of water. And it's not only in Dar es Salaam, but imagine even in the villages, in rural areas, there is still this lack of water. People, they travel a very long distance to look for water. I'm coming from Gongo village, and the mamas are walking more than 14 kilometers just to look for the water in their home uses purposes. So, here now it come. What the issue? Everyone here heard about the climate change, but is it a real thing? Let us not figure it out in Western areas. Let's come and think it in our areas where we are now. Imagine, this is Wami River. Since when I was young, driving to Dar es Salaam, every time I cross this river, it's full of waters. And many also you, of you have heard this. It's the home for crocodiles, hypos, fish, etc. You can see now, this is the depth of Wami River. The place where now we get water in Dar es Salaam. This is the source of water in every area here in Dar es Salaam. But look, the depth went very, very down. And recently you might have heard also in the news that we didn't have rain and we, did, we have an issue of water. Every place in Dar es Salaam, you walk, you pass, you can see these issues of water. But what real, real the reason of all this to happen at this area? Of course, it's charcoal demand. Charcoal is cheap and it's very, very easy to make it. One day, while we were working at our activities, we walked inside the forest and we found an old man carrying a bunch of firewoods on his head, a lot of them, and we were working with a patrol guy, so we stopped this old man. Hey, Mze, stop. Why do you have this? Why do you have a lot of bunch? And it's, it's not right for you to do this. It's illegal to cut down the trees. You are not allowed to cut down these trees here. Why do you have this? Why are you doing this? This old man looked at us, and of course, he has very, very sharp eyes, and he took the bunch of uh, the, fire, uh, the, the woods down. Then he told us, listen, my grandson, I have been doing this four years ago. And I was in jail because of this activity. But I'm doing this because it's the only way that I can earn money. And it's fine. If you want to take me again back, okay, because I cannot feed my family if I'm, do, if I'm not going to do this. This changed my mind. And I knew that it's a big issue. And you might agree the same that this is a big issue. So this charcoal, because it's cheap and easy to make, it also helps people to gain income more easily because there is high demand of charcoal, especially in the city like how we are in Dar es Salaam. All areas, there is high demand of charcoal. 
Imagine Dar es Salaam has a demand of 40,000 bags of charcoal each day. 40,000 bags of charcoal each day. Just imagine 1.2 million bags of charcoal every month. And look now, what is it about in a year? More than 14 million. We really need charcoal in Dar es Salaam. And this in charcoal is made in the village. They make a lot of charcoal. But they really don't use it as much as how people in the cities, they use this charcoal. So the city areas, they don't see deforestation themselves. They cannot really see the deforestation. So look at this cycle now. What are the real causes? Low education, it really leads us to an awareness of environment challenges. La that leads to making charcoal. People, they have no any source. So because they don't know, they are not aware about environmental degradation issues, then they cut down the charcoal. And this charcoal, as I said, it means to less uh, trees and also less rainfall. And it really um, goes to um, environmental damage. And that means less animals. And do you know that our Tanzania, the backbone of income, we are getting through the tourism industry. So a lot of people, they come in Tanzania to see these animals. So it means that if there is also less animals, also will be poverty, we get poor because we are not going to get um, uh, income. And this can continue to be a cycle again. But also, if we are getting poor, still we cannot get a good education because students will never go to school because parents, they don't have money to pay their fees and this system can keep on going. So here now, we come as SANA in an organization to be like a place where everyone is always welcome to create new ideas asking for help, and even just a talk. Some organization wants to be really, really involved with the local peoples and local villages, but also give them a place that feels like a second home. We try to teach our community around different, different alternative ways that they can use in making money. We have the group of mamas teaching them how to make batik, how to make baskets, mats, etc. And through this, they earn an income. And they forget about uh, taking the resources of the forest, but they can see other ways of earning an income. But also through this activity, it brings them together. It makes all the women within the community to be together and we always believe women have a power, a natural power. There are people who they can lead to change the community around. So now these women, they earn money, and of course, they leave the natural areas. So we get enough rainfall for the agricultural activities. And it's also making them being aware that by keeping the forest, it has attracted tourism. Since now, a lot of people, they will come to view Sadani National Park and they will stop at their community buying their product. And again, they will get income through the tourism. But we also do conservation by involving young people, youth, to do conservation activities through seed bank activities. I'm very happy that I'm working at the seed bank whereby it's just like a normal bank, whereby you take your money and you want your money back for different activities. The same cases here. We have to collect seeds. I assume that we want to plant 10,000 trees this week. But if we need to plant 10,000 seeds, 10,000 trees, 
we really need to have a lot of seeds. Let's say 50,000 seeds. Because other seeds will die on process, die in trees, but finally we'll find out that you can be able to plant 10,000 trees. So this is what we are doing. And we are bringing the community there to work in this collection of seeds. So they also protect their forest by believing that they can get this chance, opportunity of work in the seed bank. When we were initially starting our project, it was real, real hard to find um, seeds. We went inside the forest, sampled trees, and we made a lot of species of trees, 40,000 species that we really need to reforest back to the places where it has already been deforestated. But we missed the native trees. We missed the native seeds. And this now came an idea of us having a seed bank. But we also want to engage the local community in decision making. I always believe that we cannot come out with, the, with our own solution. We also need the local people, knowledge to help in bringing solutions that are happening within their areas. So we have meetings in the village. They discuss about our own forest. How do we want to use it? How do we want to protect it? And this has really bring a very good impact within our area. As I said that these local people also, they have the good, good local knowledge. They can determine when is it the raining season. The wind is, um, um, what does this wind mean? The direction, etc. So all this knowledge that uh, the local community people they have, it also helps in conservation activities. But we also do believe that you can empower people, you can do in conservation activities, but also we really need to do education. We really need to educate people. So we started by permacultural training to the communities around. We educate them how to utilize the small area. Instead of them keeping going further, cutting down the forest in order to plant their crops, then we'll teach them how can they utilize small areas and do these agricultural activities. But we also give them education on how we can use natural things to protect their farms, such as beehives and chili bricks. As I said that, we have a big issue of elephant intruding to the, uh, to the farms, taking out their crops. And I can tell you, one night, there were four elephants that they went to a farm of one farmer in the Gongo village. And these four elephants, they ate 600 pineapples in just a few hours. Now you can understand why is it really need to talk that we really need to live in balance. Everyone might be sad about the farmer, of course, even me. The farmer lost out his capital. But also maybe the elephant was happy walking to the river. And as I told you, elephants, they are very great animals. They pass, they found a pineapple, and it was sweet. They couldn't leave it, even if it's you. You, have, you. you really want to drink water, and you pass, you find something sweet. You'll, you'll, you'll want to, to try it, right? So the elephant did it. And of course, 600 pineapples in very, very few hours. The farmer wakes up chasing the elephant. Yeah, in the morning, 600 pineapples are not there. So we try to teach them now. How can you protect your farm so elephant cannot intrude to your farm? Put a beehive. So if you put a beehive in the tree, the elephant, they don't like bees. When they hear the sound of bees, they try to move away. So by putting the beehives there, not any elephant will go to the farm. But also that tree will be protected because nobody will cut the tree because of the bees. They're afraid the bees will sting. 
again, we'll conserve our areas by having them, uh, the, the trees there. And all this we are doing, as I said, to just bring us to live in balance with nature. By only education, it's not only about environmental, but also about so much more. And here now, we are combating law education to ensure that kids get a chance for the better future, including good jobs. I started by saying that a lot of parents want us to be doctors, pilots, and engineers, of course, if we are designing, going to primary schools. One of the biggest thing is that we, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a pilot. So by giving them good education now, we can have plant doctors as well, people who will take care of the nature. So we hope that by giving education to these um, children, through engaging them in hand to practice about environmental issues, by having different songs, different elephant games, it will really help in saving this world. Hopefully, this will change and break the cycle that we have created. We do not inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. Thank you for your attention, and let's combat the climate change together. Thank you.